Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f up. <laughs> You're listening to Believe You Me with Michael the Count Bisbing. You know my name yet? And Anthony Lionheart Smith. Well, listen, let's start with that main event. I mean, look, listen, and thanks for stepping in, by the way. Paul Felder, uh, yeah. you're the man. Um, Anthony will be back next week, ladies and gentlemen. So sit tight, all you Anthony Smith fans. <laughs> um, listen, we all, I say we all, I certainly do. I think the general consensus, people love Volkanovsky. You know what I mean? He's just a solid guy, great human being, playing up to the whole the whole old man thing was hilarious. <laughs> he fights all the time, takes on the best challenges, all the rest of it. It's just a tough, bloody sport. But let me ask you, Paul, what did you make all week leading up to it? Taporia was so confident, changed yeah. his bio. He was making a documentary about how he was going to become champion of the world, said he was going to knock him out in round one. What was your thoughts on all of that? Man, you know, I, I, at first, I, I'm one of those guys, right? I've always been... <clears throat> a pretty humble guy. So when I see that stuff, I just put myself in those shoes and I could never do that. Right. Because I've never been that confident. My God, I wish I had the confidence that somebody like Taporia or somebody like Connor has, but that's just never been me. Um, but man, I've got some friends that are big fans of the UFC and gamble a lot. And a lot of my friends in the know, they were, they were on the Taporia hype train. They believed that he was going to get it done. And I kept arguing, you know, you're just, rec it's recency bias. You're looking at yep. Volk coming off of a, a knockout to a bigger guy, blah, blah, blah. But my God, dude, he is, he's good. And we knew he was good, but he's got the swagger. He's got the confidence that he showed. I mean, he really is setting himself up to be that next big thing. And, you know, living in Spain, wanting to bring the UFC there. I know Dana said he's interested in, in trying to get the company over there. I want to go to Spain. Um, Me too. I have no problem with that, right? Let's go to Spain. No issues. Um, but I like this kid, man. I got to hang out with him after he fought Jai Herbert in London for a little bit in his room. And uh, it was me and like 40 other dudes from his camp, though. It was an interesting party that was going on in that room, drinking champagne. Tapuri was like dress shirt, all these gold chains. He, but he just carries some confidence, man. Even when I was talking to him in London last year, he just exudes confidence. And uh, – he believed in himself and he got it done. I can't believe he got it done as early as he did, too. It looked like Volk was figuring things out a little bit. They were having some nice exchanges, but that boy can crack, Michael. Man, it was the exact same right hook that he floored Jai Herbert with. That yeah. thing is powerful. And the, the crazy thing is, speaking about his potential, we only saw one part of his game. I mean, yeah. the UFC did that fantastic little uh, package all about his build-up. You know, when did you see it where they had him dressed as like a bull, a bullfighter and yeah. stuff? That was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, wrestling at four years old, high-level jujitsu. I mean, the man can do it all at the highest level. As you said, the mindset, the confidence, and then to knock out, out Volk like that, to floor him. And Volk, ah, he, he was out for quite some time. He, he was, was really yeah. scary. I mean, just... I know I, he said that. I had a feeling that it was going to be a hard fight for Volk, but I didn't expect that. I didn't see Volkanovski crumpled on the floor. And he even said, I'm going to stumble and then crumble him. Yeah. The man's a soundbite machine. Yeah. I, 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 listen, I mean, he re I've seen all the comparisons to him and Connor recently. I mean, the tattoos, the swagger, even grabbing the belt like Connor did again, I know. against. Um, Jose Aldo, Aldo. Did the same thing when they put them side by side. It's like, holy crap. I mean, this kid is just kind of taking the template, taking what do I got to do to become a superstar? First of all, we both know this. You got to have it first before you do any of that other nonsense. And you can't take that away from Taporia or even Connor when he was in his prime. You can talk all the talk. You can do all the stuff at the press conference. You can be loud. You can be brash, but you got to show up and get the job done. And he did that. I mean, the, the guy looks the part. He talks the talk. But then, man, he walked the walk and went out there and put away Volk the way he did. I mean, in a lot of ways, he did it even more impressively than, I don't know, head kick knockout from Islam. But he did it with Volk on a full camp. At least yeah. when Islam did it, weight class difference, short notice fight, big weight cut for Volk, coming off surgeries. Volk was right to have all the excuses in the world going into that second fight with 
Islam this time prepared, had a little time off. No, and he said it, no excuses. Yeah. I got caught up against the fence where I knew I couldn't be with this guy. But Taporia just he doesn't rush things, man. He just walked down for using the jab a little bit, setting things up, and then when he lands, look yep. out. I mean, it was phenomenal. It really was. Volkanovsky says he wants to rematch him again straight away, uh, which I understand, of course. course. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about it a little bit on the end of the broadcast. I get it as a fighter. Of course you do. You want to get back in there and you want to fight for the belt again. You want to take back what was yours, yeah. you know, and of course the paydays and all the rest of it, everything that comes with becoming champion. But more importantly, he wants to do it because he wants to be the champion. Never mind the money, the fame, the accolades, revenge. I'm the champ. I'm the goddamn yeah. champ. And I want to fight for that belt and right the wrongs. But now coming off the back of two stoppages in a two row. Bad, two bad ones too, Michael. Two bad ones. Three out of his last four. I mean, that puts Volk at a big disadvantage going into that rematch if it does in fact take place. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, I thought the same thing when I saw him saying, okay, I want the rematch. And you're goddamn right. Of course he does, right? That he's yeah. a competitor and he's the greatest featherweight. And that and, and for all that to get taken away from you after all these fights with Islam, then this fight, it's got to be so frustrating. I mean, you were the GOAT. You were one of the guys that we're talking about, just hands down, best featherweight, unbelievable. Who, the who's who. He's beaten everybody. But age, man, it, 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 it just happens. It doesn't happen gradually for everybody either, right? It can just be almost seemingly overnight. And I feel like that's what we're witnessing is he's now, what, 37? No, and I think he's 35. Is he only 35? Well, it's not that old. No, really, no, no. It's no. not said and done. No, not that, I mean, 35 is definitely not that old. Or even no. 37 is not that old. No. No. Um, but I'll tell you what, at 39, almost 40 myself, it made me go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I've been talking a lot about a comeback. I, I, I slowed yeah, my roll yeah. a little bit on that. When you see these young guys like Taporia, man, it's like, holy crap. Yeah. The next Let generation. me ask you, Paul, did, did you ever get knocked out? Not like that, no. I mean, I, I got more of my damage probably in sparring than I ever did in the cage, luckily. Um, but, I mean, I definitely took some some head kicks yeah. and stuff throughout the years and training, training with uh, cowboy over the years. So, Oh no, I'm sure, I'm sure the, re the reason I asked that is because I did, you know, no. on multiple occasions and definitely regardless of however tough we all say we are and where we think we are when it comes to it on the night, when you've just been stopped, when you've been knocked out and you fight before, there's a little bit of doubt in the mind oh, because yeah. no longer you're not invincible. You know yeah. you're only human being, and the entire world does. More importantly, so does your opponent. They know you can be hurt. Uh, and now, as I say, two times in a row. So for Volkanovski, listen, I get it, right? I'm, I'm not going to say don't do that, right? Yep. He's an incredible fighter. He was the pound for pound number one. But I'd say take some time off. Only 35, I'd say take a year off. Take yeah. a year off. Take six months off. Enjoy the spoils of your riches. Enjoy all your success. Spend some time with the family and come back hungry as a dog. Maybe let Taporia defend it against someone else in the meantime because Taporia probably wants to stay active. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I, I agree. Think we're going to see a rematch. I yeah, I think, I, I, I think taking a little time, hanging out with that family, uh, letting the body rest up. I mean, he's been busy. He's been trying. And, but – he mentioned it himself after that loss to Islam that that's what he struggles with. It's yeah. the time in between. It's the time when he doesn't have a training camp. It's when he doesn't have a goal. So he needs to find something. I think this is a good time for him to go and figure out like, okay, there is a cap. There is a ceiling to how long I can do this stuff. What am I going to do when it is finally done? I'm not saying to retire now. He's still got a lot of fight mm -hmm. left in him, but maybe it's time to figure out what other things can I do? What am I going to do when I'm done? making money through fighting is it coaching is it just staying in the gym he's got to find ways to fill that time so that he doesn't lose his mind like he has been in the past so we'll see you, what he you're does. absolutely right you bring up a fantastic point because when you are going from fight to fight to fight you don't have time to think about anything else because it's yep. all uh what's the word i'm saying all consuming 100 yep. now he is going to have some time so yeah Think about that. I'm sure a man like Bok has got a ton of options. You know, in Australia, ridiculous popularity. The sport's booming out there. He could run a gym. He's got money to invest in businesses and stuff like that, defending the belt five times, being a part yeah. of seven world title fights. He'll have plenty 
of cash. So there's lots of options for it. But regarding the point what you said uh, about it eats away at him and he mm-hmm. wants to get back in there, it's going to be even worse now. Yeah. Because that's why it was eating away at him. Because, Paul, I say this all the time, this is our egos. It's our mm-hmm. goddamn egos why we want to compete, why we want to fight. Yeah, of course, there's the business side of it. Of course there is, but we think we can do it. We think that we're the man. We think we should rightfully be the champion of the world. So, therefore, I'm going to come back and I'm going to fight. So, if that was an issue before, that's going to be compounded. It's going to be even worse for Volk now. Yeah, that's why I, I think... Wrong you know, hopefully he can reflect, right? I think emotions run high, especially right after a fight, press conferences, even the week after he's going to be talking about, he wants to get that fight back. But I think if he sits down with his family, sits down with the coaches, maybe they can kind of slow his roll and be like, listen, we're not saying you're, we're not saying you, you're not going to do that right away, but let's just take a couple of weeks and let everything settle. Let's see how you're feeling. Let's see how the head's feeling. You know, because a lot of times, especially after shots like that, you might feel all right for a little bit, but he might just, you know, he might want to just chill out for a little bit and, uh, and and kind of reassess everything as he calms down from the emotions of the fight. But you're right, dude. It's going to – a guy like Volk, somebody that's just been the best for so long, it's going to drive him crazy. If he doesn't figure out now how to deal with these time times in between fights. Now, let me ask you this, Paul, and this seems like a weird thing to bring you on a podcast and ask about. You had an incredible career. You beat some legends, Charles Oliveira. I mean, the list goes on. What was your worst loss? And the reason I'm asking that is because oh. to liken it to the Volk situation. For me, clearly, the UFC 100 fight against Dan Henderson where I got yeah. flatlined, that was my toughest loss. And yet to deal with that... Um, you know, I, I didn't process it. And I did what I think a lot of fighters do. You just, you bury it inside. Yeah. Ah, it's fine. Whatever. You, Move on. You, yeah. Shit happens. I got caught. It is what it is. But then eventually one day later on, you know, it, it caught up with me emotionally and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but what about you? What was your yeah. toughest moment? That's a good question. And I, I got a pretty clear one. It was when I moved up to 170 and I fought uh, Mike Perry. Uh, at, uh, when Cormier fought uh, Stipe. We were like the, one of the featured bouts on that card, dude. And I went to battle with that guy. And obviously the dude, as we see now, is bare knuckle champion, savage, hits like a truck, man. He's not a huge guy, but I've never been hit like that uh, at lightweight, that harder than when Mike Perry hit me. I broke my ulna bone really bad, so I had a snapped ulna bone, so I couldn't move my arm at all. I had yeah. cuts all over my face, all over my hairline, just – covered in blood i've got some crazy pictures in the ambulance where it looked like i was a corpse um i was all pale for i was concussed like crazy and it was the same thing a couple days later i just i couldn't like emotions were getting the best of me i couldn't control everything so that's i knew that one was bad i remember coming back home with christine and i just and then you're doubting everything i didn't have to take that fight i took that fight because I had lost my opponent and James Vick who got moved to another card. I rushed into it. I was like, I can fight at 170. And then it's definitely the most damage to the head that I've taken in a fight. Uh, It's a bitch, isn't it? Because as you said, you didn't need to take that fight. And a lot of the time, like, like, like we bulk against Islam in the second one, didn't need to take the fight, you know, but then you start saying, what if I didn't, what if I had just rested up, said no to the UFC then, then you get this Tapuria fight, but you haven't been knocked out. You haven't gone through any. Oh, God. It. You know that's what's oh. going through his mind, right? What if yeah. I didn't take that first one because the fir- or, or the second one? The first one was competitive, awesome fight. But then that second one, man, he thought that was his destiny, and it wasn't. Then this one, he's like, no, this, this is my destiny to do this, and you get knocked out. It's like... And that's when the self-loathing starts oh, to come into life. And everybody told me. My yep. manager said it. My wife oh, don't said, do it. Don't, don't do it. it. Yeah. Don't do it. You're like, oh, I got this, mate. Don't worry about it. Ah. Oh, bloody hell. Well, rest up, Bulk. You're an absolute yeah. bloody you're, you're, legend. You are. He's the man, dude. He. That's one of those things. This one's, it's sad for any MMA fan. Like, if you're not a fan of Volkanovski, uh, I, yeah. I don't know what your issue is. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's such a good dude. He's such a badass. Family guy, girl dad, all the things. And uh, 
it's tough to see him take a take a couple big losses. And the popularity. I mean, in the arena when they showed his face on the screen or anything like that, the place just lit up. The energy from the crowd was absolutely phenomenal. So he's loved, he's loved. There's lots to be positive about, but we always dwell on the bad things. It's just human nature. Yeah. I mean, he's had an incredible career. He defended the belt five times. Um, he's got a beautiful family to go home to, money in the bank, money opportunities in the bank, going for forward. sure. Money oh, definitely. <laughs> Big money in the bank. I mean, when he fought in Perth, he flew there by a private jet. You know what yeah. I mean? He's got money in the bank. That's for damn sure. But yeah. he'll still be – I was going to say still be feeling sorry for himself. I don't know if he will. Do you know what I mean? He said, listen, I've ruined other people's nights before. My night got ruined. Yeah. It is what it is. I think he's just, just disappointed, man. He's, uh, he's a competitor to the max, max, max. So he's just going to be driving himself – nuts with questions of what if what if this until he gets back in there and hopefully that's a while from now just so that we can see him at his best you've just given me the greatest segue of this show ever he mm. is a competitor to the max 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 but what about max 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 holloway because <laughs> because max holloway is probably having similar thoughts right now he might be thinking why have i stepped up to yeah. fight just engage it yeah when right now the shot at the featherweight title could Wide be open. right there, you know. Yeah. Uh, all right, listen, let's just assume sometime later this year they do Spain bulk versus Taporia, okay? But hypothetically, let's just say that fight doesn't come together. Justin Gage, he fights Max Holloway, UFC 300, going to be a fantastic fight. If he wins and becomes the BMF, of course, then that, what a story that would be then to go back down to 45 and fight Taporia. Yeah. If... He loses, which I think a lot of people, when you sit down and you're honest, can make an argument for Justin Gagey winning that fight. He's just bigger yeah. and hits like a truck. Do you think that affects Max Holloway's ability to challenge for the title against Taporia? I think it depends on how it goes, right? Because we've seen him do this before when he fought Poirier. It didn't <sighs> go his way, but it was a good fight. And, you know, go back down to featherweight and, but I just think he's had so many chances at the belt. He's He reigned as champion for so long. He lost to Volk so many times that even though Taporia is new in the championship slot, I think if he gets like dusted by Gaethje, I think Taporia is going to be like, not that he calls the shots. Obviously, Dana, Sean, Mick, the, you know, the company's going to call those shots based on what's going to sell and what looks the best. But if he gets beat up by Gaethje, I mean, yeah. do you want to see him go right into a title shot with a savage like to pour? I mean, I, I love Max and I love watching Max fight, but I think he's got to at least make it super competitive for us to consider or win. Now, if he wins, yeah, fuck, yeah boom, no, slide no him in there. Max is right back up to the top. And that's got to be what he's thinking, Michael, right? He's got to be thinking, my God, I've, I've fought the best dudes my whole career. I was the champion for so freaking long. I got to do something dramatic to get the attention of the fans to want me back to, for the UFC to want me back in that big title shot, because with Volk, he could just be sliding right back in there. And then if he slides right back in there and Max is the guy, it's like, all right, do we want to see that again? Not that there were not going to be great fights, but I think that chapter is definitely close. So a big win puts him, I think, boom, set that up. That'd yeah. be an awesome fight. And best of luck to both men, of course. Um, staying on the UFC 300 thing, there was a little bit of a, um, momentum for a moment that you were going to be on there versus Jim Miller. As we know, that ain't the case. It's yeah. Bobby Green. We were yeah. talking about getting older. Paul, if you don't mind me asking, what's the situation? Are you going to be preparing for a different opponent or where's the mind? Man, the mind right now is 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 back just, I want to get back working more, calling more fights. It's been like four months where I've only been, I, we, November till now is so freaking slow because <laughs> There's at least a pay-per-view a month, which me and you don't get every one of them like DC does nope. most of the time. We get our spots like you just did this past week. You're great we, job, we, by the way. We, we get the crumbs. We get if some DC crap. can't yeah, make can. it. Joe Rogan uh, doesn't want to travel. And they're like, yeah. oh, who can we send to the other side of the world? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, but hold on. This was in my backyard. This was 15 right, had, minutes away. It how, far, how far of a trip is that for you to go to Anaheim? I live in Anaheim. Oh, my God. So you're there. I live in Anaheim Hills, the bougie part. Uh, 
15 minutes, literally. Oh, That's all it is. It was Did you stay at home the whole time then? Stayed at home the whole time. The wife wow. came, kids came. We finished. We went to this little restaurant by our house. No, it's a very casual place. It's called yeah. BJ's. Had a pizza, a couple of little drinks, home by midnight. It was brilliant. That's awesome. It was nice, man. I woke up in bed the next day, fresh as a daisy, wasn't going to an airport, none of that business. Uh, and the people of Anaheim and everyone in the crowd, what an ad that was. And of course, we got lots of fights to go through. But we like to sprinkle in a few non-MMA stories just to, you know, keep, keep maybe in. some non-MMA fans interested. Let me ask you this. I'll start with this. And Harrington can jump on. Are you a Breaking Bad fan? So I, 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 I did not finish the whole thing, but I have seen many episodes of Breaking Bad over the years. Have not. Hold uh, on. How can you start Breaking Bad and not finish it? I, Michael, I'm so bad at finishing shows, dude. I, and I liked it. I, I think I watched the whole first season and then just be me being me, my commitment to uh, watching shows is is awful. If my If my commitment to watching shows was the same as my commitment to other things I've done in life, I would not have made it anywhere. Oh, That's I know, I know, because 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 we both uh, we, we we both do a little bit of acting, and whenever I'm like talking to anyone in that world, like, have you seen this one? Have you seen that one? Have you seen this movie? I'm like, no, no, no. Nope. Like Saturday night, there were so many bloody celebrities, obviously. Orange County, California, yeah. close to LA. And I was looking around because obviously where we commentate, you look to the left, that's Dana's section where all the VIPs are, yeah. you know. And I was like, I'm I'm useless, right? There was like so many people. I'm like, that person Who is that? really I familiar. Know that person. I'm like, I, just, <laughs> I kept making eye contacts with Mark Zuckerberg all night, which was weird because he was right oh. there at Dana's <laughs> section. And I'd look left to look at Anik. I'm looking at John and Joe because I'm on the end. But, but it looks ducks right over the shoulder. My my eyeline is right there. Do you know what I mean? And I think he was like, why do you keep staring at me? And I'm like, like why is this thing just keep staring at me? Yeah. In the end, I gave him like a little thumbs up and he, he <laughs> smiled and waved. I'm like, oh, God, that was cringe. Um, what was I saying? Anyway, anyway, so yeah, fantastic. The atmosphere, man, was brilliant. Harrington, the reason I ask about Breaking Bad is because, Harrington, the floor is yours. Uh, so I have a story out of Long Island, a 23 year old, what they are calling a brilliant scientist, according to his legal defense, uh, started a laboratory uh, this, in Queens. This guy? Yes. Brilliant oh, scientist. <laughs> brilliant scientist. Uh, he started a legitimate laboratory that he claims uh, was for studying the effects of cannabis, uh, you know, on, on regular users. Uh, there was a, a break in at his place at 3.30 in the morning. So he called the police there when the police arrived. They found multiple ounces of methamphetamine, about forty thousand dollars in cash, ecstasy, and tons of DMT. <laughs> they got a warrant and checked the whole rest of the place. Turns out this guy was doing a full-on Breaking Bad style meth operation out of a Long Island research laboratory. And he called the cops on him. He ratted. He ratted himself <laughs> out. He ratted himself <laughs> out. Basically. I mean, I've done some pretty stupid things in my time. But I'd like to think that if I was operating a high-level drug oh, empire, I was if, making the drugs. If I you are the making the drugs, you don't call the cops no matter what. It, even if somebody shows up with machine guns and is trying to kill you, listen, you're making yeah. the drugs. This is that's part of the job. That's, if me and you, Michael, called the cops and we're like at the gym and somebody's punching us in the face while we're training for a fight, you, you, you don't do that. And when you're making meth, you don't bring the police involved because somebody broke in. It's like, yeah, they broke in because they're trying to steal your money because you're making meth and you have cash in your place. Exactly. Exactly. And they said, yeah, his lawyer was like, oh, he's a brilliant scientist. He was studying the effects of drugs and stuff like that. It's like, all right. Well, that's, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, That's, that's the best one. excuse you can come up with. That's what I would say, too, if I was high on crack or meth. I'd be like, well, I was just trying to figure out how it affected me. That's all. Yeah. And yeah. apparently there was a ton of fentanyl there as well. So, uh, I, mean, I mean, look, listen, the guy of that, that he, guy's he's got better a off. face look thing going on. The one side, can we get that guy's picture back up? Look at this guy's Let's face. Have a look, right? One side is not quite, just imagine. Oh, yeah. he's, he's, well, he's certainly he's got a, not he's into got a big head, So maybe he is smart. I mean, who knows? Yeah, you never know. He's got a big old brain. Bulging the out of there. Big that. brain on bread. Look at the big. It looks like Pinky in the brain. You ever see that yes. cartoon? Oh man, yeah. That and that's what he was he, trying to do. He's trying to take over the world. What are we doing tonight, Pinky? Same, Same thing, thing we, we do, do every, every night. night. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> fentanyl. I don't know why that popped in my head. That's that's a big problem. Paul, you're in Philadelphia. How yeah. are the streets of Philadelphia these days? They're not good. If you go down the city and certain parts of the city, yeah, it's really bad. I mean, you know, and you can find where those kind of places are at. You just see people on corners just kind of doing the doing the the nod, uh, the slump. Um, it's been – that's been a pretty – that just heroin in in Philly has been pretty bad, especially um, North Philly areas, like where Eddie Alvarez and those guys in in, in the Badlands and stuff like that is is um it's bad. it's sad, man. You go into the L train in Philly down in North Philly, and it's just it's like corpses everywhere, man. Now, really? People just complete people doing that slump that like the dope slump that it doesn't even make sense how they are even upright still. You know what I mean? It's it, it's madness. They're defying gravity. My my girl and yeah. I are like our routine watch, like our screensaver at home, basically, is the security camera at the Kensington station. Yeah. yeah. Is, so you know that. That's you where you see that. the zombies moving around Philadelphia. Yeah. So yeah. your screensaver on your computer or your TV is basically yeah. mocking poor uh, disease struck people and you're just mocking them from your ivory tower just laughing at them these are real people having to with stories Harrington. with backgrounds with brothers sisters families mothers and you're sitting know, there feeding the baby laughing your heads off we both don't have an ivory tower but it is nice to <laughs> look at and be like yo it's pretty could good be worse it yeah, could dude, be worse we got to be grateful for what we got or jane it could be bad out there yeah yeah no you're right you're right there's a part in england that i don't want to offend anybody in blackpool there's a town in blackpool it's about an hour away from where i'm from i used to go there all the time oh dude it's terrible it's terrible and and i'm just every place has got that that neighborhood that is just bad some of the ugliest people you will ever see do you know what i mean like you walk down you're like it's like, yeah, life isn't too bad. But the, when I used to DJ, there was a record shop that I liked called the Melody House. So I used to go there all the time. And Rebecca would be like, please, because I didn't have a driver's license when we got yeah. together. As soon as we hooked up, I'm like, oh, nice. I got, I got a free taxi. So yeah. every Saturday, we would end up in Blackpool and she goddamn hated it. No. I remember one yeah. day we were walking along and there's a pleasure. It's called the Pleasure Beach. Right, so there's a big like it's like a Disneyland, if you will, but they call it the Pleasure Beach. So it's a massive tourist destination. It's a shithole, man. It's a, <laughs> sh- it's a it's not like Anaheim, California with Disneyland. It's a dump. It is yeah. sorry the people of Blackpool, you know it's true. I just Googled people in Blackburn and you fucking were not lying. <laughs> <laughs> like Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hold on. They might be regulars on the show. Don't put their faces on. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what the fuck, Michael? No, dude, dude. I was, uh, we were walking along. It was a beautiful sunny day. It was summer. Those are rare. And uh, we'd been to the record shop and we had the kids, Callum and Ellie. They were still in baby chairs, strollers and stuff. And then just a massive fight broke out, like a big gang of gypsies ran across the street and they had hammers in their hands. And like I've seen a lot. I'm hard to shot. And there was, the place is packed, you know, like, you know, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. The, people just getting mauled with hammers and baseball hammers. bats. It was like, what? Claw hammers. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah. we need to get out yeah, of here. Time to right go. That's it was a bad day. Bad day in Blackpool. Bad day in Blackpool. Anyway, oh. um, if you're going to sell drugs, don't call the police on yourself. Don't call the cops. Don't sell drugs. But if you're gonna, if you're going to, don't call the cops. <laughs> if you're dying of cancer and you're trying to raise some money for your family before you die and you are forced down this dark, dark yeah. path, don't call the police. Don't on call yourself. the cops. I would just give a disclaimer that, believe you me, does not, yeah. you know, want no. to sell Actually, drugs. No, 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 no. We're we saying don't, don't sell drugs. Don't yeah. drugs. We're saying, but if, you but if forced, you're gonna, don't if call the cops. cartel force you to do it, yeah. even then, don't call the police. Definitely don't. All right, guys, today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp that specialize in online therapy done securely and conveniently from the comfort of your phone. Men's health, women's health, mental health has never had a bigger spotlight on it, but it's still something that is not fully used by everybody. 
everyone's got an issue more than likely not everyone rebecca doesn't but a lot of people do right whether it's something that you suffered with growing up maybe you had a tough childhood maybe you've got an addiction issue maybe you're just not becoming the best version of yourself maybe you're riddled with anxiety whatever it is maybe you're drinking too much speaking to a licensed professional therapist will help okay so there's no better time to take the bull by the horns and doing it with better help is the best way of doing it as i said everything's done online it is designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule you just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed professional therapist and you can switch therapist at any time for no charge of course if you're not vibing with that person so what more are you waiting for take the bull by the horns don't let any kind of, you know, stigma stop you from doing this. You will thank me later. Right now, they've got a great offer. Visit betterhelp.com slash believe and you will get 10% off your first month. Betterhelp.com slash believe, 10% off one more time. Betterhelp.com slash believe. Uh, anyway, let's get back on track. Um Robert Whittaker, Paolo Costa. Oh, that's a good one. What what a fight. I want to start off with Paolo Costa yeah. because he's a bit of a maniac. He's very inconsistent, <laughs> but he's yeah. he's hilarious. I spoke he to him for the hilarious. first time last week. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. Obviously a physical specimen, yep. right? The chin on he, – he never has a mark on him after a fight. He, Robert he Whittaker – Whitaker beat the crap out of him, right? Well, they beat the crap out of each other. Whitaker looked like he'd been in a car accident. Yep. Paolo Costa looked like he'd still go, you know, do a Ricky Martin impression and be on the front cover <laughs> of a magazine, apart from his shin bone, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah that, that, that was a phenomenal fight. Robert Whitaker almost got finished at the end of round one. Dude. But the speed, the ferocity, the combinations, take it away, Paul Felder. Yeah, I mean, even at the weigh-ins, I was watching the weigh-ins for that fight, and I, that's when I was like, yo, Robert Whitaker looks ready to go. You, you could tell he was ready to come back out and get back into that win column, and he had to overcome a lot to do it because Paulo Costa, he was game. And I'm so happy to see that because, look, this dude's fun to watch no matter where or what or who he's fighting. We want him in this division. We want Paulo Costa active. The guy... When he get when he actually makes it to the cage and into the octagon, he's must see fighting and he's entertainment in the yeah. press conference in the build up. He looks great and he fights great. He's flexible like crazy. Can we talk about those, the flexibility those, of this dude? Those kicks, those Is kicks were spinning hook ridiculous. Kick? Hold Look on, at this. Is this boom! Well, that I mean, dude, that's a picture perfect spinning hook kick that he landed on the chin. I remember, I I, I couldn't believe it. I was here with my buddy Bill and I'm like. How is he not on? That was square on the face, spinning hook kick. With the heel. Perfect time. With the, With heel. the heel. But the head kicks as well. The fluidity. <laughs> so the flexible. speed. Yeah. Just whips them off. So up. good. So I'm just glad Unreal. to see him. I'm glad to see him back and motivated. And then I saw that he tweeted out that he'll be back. Thank you all for the support. He seems to be like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to keep fighting because... The only thing that was in Paulo Costa's way was either the negotiations himself. He wasn't happy with something, right? Well, I, we'll probably never truly know what was going on, injuries or, you know, I, I spoke to one of his coaches last week, a guy called Gregory, I believe. I can't remember his last name. His strength and conditioning coach, but also his mind coach. Mm. And he was saying they've got his mind right now because well, there definitely was something a little off. And I was saying yeah. on the broadcast, physically – He's a 10, a 10 out of 10, A star, whatever you want to call it. All right. He's yep. a prime slab of Brazilian beef. Right? <laughs> he's, got a, he's a got a gas tank as well. Yeah. You know, if you're at Korea, you're asking for the Paolo Costa cut. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's the slab of steak that you want. Um, but if the mind's right, and let's remember, he had a break as well. That was like first fight in two years or something. He hasn't had a busy schedule. He's no. only 32. Um, but we got to talk about Robert Whittaker. Oh, dude back he's back man he had he had to fight hard he had to dig deep and he puts himself right back in, in contention um and things are mixed up in the division you know what i mean israel is is not holding that belt at the moment so you know he's looking for that rematch eventually if he can get there if it's still going to be in the hands of Dricus Duplessis. So things are wide open right now in that division for him i think another win right at least right though i think rob's got to go beat somebody else because 
Drickus has got the belt. Um, he lost to Drickus. He's also lost uh, to he? Israel. So th- th- having a win over Paulo Costa, maybe jump in there, go beat somebody else. And, you know, eventually we can't deny him to get back into that title shot. How old? And Rob has been around forever. It, you'd think he's 35 years old and he's 33 years old. And we, I mean, I've been watching him fight probably in the UFC before I was even thinking about turning pro. That's how long he's been Wow! Uh, in the UFC. Yeah. I mean, what, when, when was his debut in the UFC yeah, off of the, he was on one of the ultimate fighters, Tough correct? Smashes. Yeah. Which I think I was mean, like 14, 2014 or 15, crazy. you know? Yeah. So, I, I, well, then, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to say something right now, and this sounds really disrespectful to Robert Whittier, but it is <laughs> not, it's not, it, it kind of is. But it just, but it shows how wrong we were. When I fought Luke Rockhold at 199, was it Rockhold? It was somebody in Sydney anyway. I think it was Rockhold. Whitkin was on the undercard. And I think he might have fought, what was he called? He had a, he had a catchy nickname. Uh, it wasn't Derek Brunson. It, 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 what was his name? He had a weird, anyway, whatever, regardless. Um, he knocked out Derek Brunson a few years later. Uh, wasn't Derek Brunson, regardless. And he was warming up in the locker room. And Perillo said to me, because he looked kind of, I mean, because Robert's so technical and he's so good and he's so skilled. Pound for pound, middleweight division, his skills are as good as we've ever seen. But he didn't look like it in the warm-up room. And this is back in 2014. Do you know what I mean? 2012 is when he came off of the show. Buster... The, uh, Buster, no, hold on, hold on. Let me look at who the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, he's warming up, and he looked like garbage. <laughs> he looked like he looked like, and and I'm warming up for Rockhold, Clint Go Hester, on. Clint Hester. What's his nickname? Anyway, whatever. He's warming up, and he looked so bad <laughs> that uh, Perillo whispered to me, he "Goes." When do we to get? When do we get to fight someone like that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? We're taking on Rockhold, who's an absolute monster. Do you know what I mean? When yeah. do we get a bloody a matchup like that? And I'm like, yeah, no shit. Tell me about it. And, and now, now you look at the look guy. At it's yeah, crazy. It's, it's unreal. Crazy. It shows the work he's put in. And by the way, he won that night, and I lost. So <laughs> uh, that was Clint Headbusser Hester. Headbusser. Headbusser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think. And Hamilton, stay on the screen. Tell me what you think. Brian, join the party, if you will. Um, Sean Strickland, Robert Whittaker, that's the fight to make. That makes all the sense. Everyone, you know, Strickland's very popular. I like want to see him back in there. He wants to get back to fight for the belt. Yep. Losing it on the first defense doesn't get you an automatic rematch, but a win over Robert Whittaker does. Yeah. A win over Strickland for Whittaker probably gets him a, another fight against Izzy or Drickus. What do we think? Am I out of my mind? No, I can't think of I can't think of anybody else like in that top ten who makes any more sense for Robert Whittaker. I mean, these are these are two guys with with very you know similar styles. They're 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 very fun to watch. Very gritty dudes, fan favorites, and put it in Australia where Strickland already has a rabid fan base. That's gonna get you know you, you're gonna have shoeies for days out there. Yeah, Whittaker hasn't lost to anybody that's not that wasn't a champion, other than Drickus Duplessis, who is now a champion since Stephen Wonderboy Thompson in 2014 when he was a, a welterweight. welterweight. Isn't that wild? Okay. So, you, I mean, you look at his resume. The guy's been fighting the best, and his only losses are champions, twice to Israel, and then obviously he lost to Drickus, who is now the middle of <clears> the <throat> So I, he's I right told there. To, I mean, he's, he's definitely yeah. elite, elite of elite. I talked about this a little bit last week, but I want to get your take on it. When I spoke to Whitaker last week, um, he was saying that he's got to go back to being nasty. Right, mm-hmm. and that, he said that's what he was gonna do, and I, I interpreted that and maybe because he, he he was kind of short with his answers. You know how it is when you cut him oh, away, and, all, and that's yeah. how that's just how Robert is in in fighter meetings, right? He's pretty just yeah. matter of yeah. fact, and and I think because as I because like when I first started fighting, I was just 
and it, I couldn't even remember the fight afterwards because I was just, yeah, just a million miles an hour, a yeah. blaze of aggression, you know yeah. what I mean? But then as you start to get better, as you start to learn some actual technique, as you start to control your emotions and use strategy and a game yeah. plan and all the rest of it, you kind of get a little bit away from the animalistic nature of it at the same time. Do you know what I mean? So that's up here, but your technique's here. And then you come here, and then maybe it goes there. The animalistic nature goes down, but the t but you're getting really technical. Yep. And Robert was saying he's got to bring the animal side back up. And yeah. I think I struggled with that as well. Is that something that you found, Paul? Yeah, it's funny you're saying because I can remember a point in my career, I think I was coming off a couple like close losses where I think – since I started to do better and you're fighting better guys in, in, a, in a, you know, an organization like the UFC where everyone's really good, you start to, like you talk about, you're working with better coaches, you start to, to strategize more, you start to really hone your technique in, and you get away from what got you to the show. What got you there was because me, and it's similar to you, was just going out there and trying to crack heads, you know what I mean? Being just a going fire. out there, elbow and knee and throwing big shots. And then that same exact thing. And I can remember at one point saying to my friends and family and teammates, I was like, I got to get back to who I was with what I've learned now. Like, okay, it definitely did do that dip where, okay, now I'm trying to, I'm be, trying to be too clean. I'm trying to be too sharp. I'm not doing the craziness. I'm not going for it as much. Uh, so yeah, that, that is yeah. absolutely something that I think a lot of fighters who get to a certain level and Robert, has probably gone up and down through that a few times now because he, he's been around for so long fighting the best guys. Yeah, well, that's what he said he was going to do, go back to that kind of style. He said he was going to get in the face, and he did precisely that. So, yeah. Robert Whittaker, congratulations. Uh, we'll rip through. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll do one. I want to go through the entirety of the main card real quick. Uh, what was before that? Ian Gary, Jeff Neal, Ian Gary. Maybe the loudest booze I've ever heard in Crazy. an arena. I mean, granted, I'm ignorant to my own booze. I got booed quite a bit. I don't think they were that bad. They were yeah. bad. They were loud. But you know what? As much as everyone likes to rip on him, and to be fair, he kind of he's kind of to blame for some of it because he's mm -hmm. very cocky, and there's nothing wrong with being cocky. Some of the things and whatever, and a lot of the stuff has been out of line as well. Right? Some of the stuff that people say about his wife is just disgusting yeah. quite frankly yeah. what colby said disgusting at that press conference right um but given all of that all of that emotion all of that hatred all the booing in the arena to stick to that game plan and whether or not you liked it whether or not i'm talking about the, the people watching right whether or not they thought it was boring whether or not they thought he was backing up too much to be that composed and to stick to that strategy that takes a lot of discipline that's tough to do. I mean, your emotions run high. Most people, at least I know if people were hating on me and all that trash was being taught, you get out there, you want to shut everybody up. You want to prove a point, but you can see that he he's proving that if it's bothering him, he's doing a really good job of putting on a poker face and putting it away and not letting it affect at least his performance. Right. And he said it before he's I, I, I'm showing up and I'm winning. They can hate me all they want. You can boo me all I want. But at the end of the day, I'm getting my hand raised and I'm undefeated. And he is right in that. If he can keep winning, even if it's not, like you said, you, when you're fighting a guy like Jeff Neal, it's smart to fight like that. If you just stand and try to knuckle up with somebody like Jeff Neal, you're going to get your face beat in. I mean, the dude is good. And it was close. Jeff still almost was able to get him a few yeah. times. So you imagine if you just sit still and don't use your kicks, don't use your range. And I think that's what makes him dangerous, Michael, is he's a good counter striker with his hands when you rush him. But if you don't rush him, he's got fantastic kicks. And he will just beat the crap out of you with head kicks, body kicks from that range all day long. And they're fast. People on here watching this, want to see us bad mouthing him. Yeah. I, I know they do because it's popular and that's like kind of the bandwagon right now. Okay. I'm sorry. Some of that striking was absolutely beautiful. The knee those, that he landed? That I was knee? just about to say Ooh. those advancing knees from the rear leg, right? My God. That's yeah. using your physical tools perfectly. Stayed yep. on the outside, jumped in with the, those knees, landed that four or five times. I mean, yeah, high level stuff. Yeah. And especially with 
training camps being all over the place, things getting canceled, getting sick, the fight's not happening. Like he's been through a lot. Now, granted, like you said, some of it self-inflicted, some of it, he's just that guy that everyone is going to want to hate right now, right? He's he's the, he's the hot topic right now of MMA where, you know, he's got this thing going on with his wife while she wrote this book. There's lots of things to kind of nitpick and, and grab onto and go after him, but and that's all good for him. I mean, do I like all that? Do I like really cocky guys and people that not really, but I can still put that aside and watch somebody perform and go, the kid's got skills. Yeah. So, so he's got skills. We cannot deny that. I think, for example, for me, one of the things that stuck out as to why he was getting booed was at the press conference when he got booed. He's like, yeah, go on. You're all paying to see me. I'm the one that you all came to see. And it's like, well, no, Came to see. You came to see Volkanovski <laughs> and Tafuria, right? And I think everyone accepts that. You're a great fight on the on the main card, of yeah. course. But it's that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about that rubs yeah. people up irritates, the wrong way. It irritates people for sure. Arrogance, yeah. cockiness, loads of fighters have it. Do you know what I mean? But when you when you talk about yourself at that level, and you're already getting the shit storm. You know, yeah. it, it just makes it easy for people to pile up. But hey, listen, congratulations. Jeff Neal is a tough SOB. Yeah. Um, I, th- I thought Ian Gary won, but, but I, I wasn't 100% sure he was going to get it. It was close. Yeah, it was very close. I agree. And uh, it's one of those fights where it, if it had gone the other way, I don't think I- I- Ian Gary can't, can't complain and vice versa. Jeff can't really... There's a lot of times where you let him just counter strike from the outside, land really good kicks, and then you get in for a little bit. But it was kind of like, well, what are you scoring? Are you scoring the aggressiveness of Jeff Neal trying to get in, but he's getting countered really well on the way. So, I mean, the strike count numbers, I think, were in favor of Ian Gary for sure, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Quite, well, sig- at least. quite significantly, I think, as well. Let me ask you this completely going off topic. I don't know why this just popped in my mind. Obviously, I was commentating Saturday night. It's only my second time doing it with Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is, you know, he's an extremely successful and famous person, probably has the biggest talking platform on planet Earth. I found myself a little, not starstruck, because I've known Joe for a long time, but a little bit nervous. when when It it took me a minute or a fight or two to get into it, because I was like, to settle down, I'm like... Right, this is. I'm in the big boy seat now. I'm sitting here with Joe Rogan. I'm like, don't say because normally I'm I'm a little bit more uh, off the cuff or whatever. Yeah, well, because you take the driver's seat, right? And you've earned that right to take the driver's seat. (laughs) Like if me, you, and Brendan are working, you know, you're the veteran there. Like me and Brendan, we haven't been around doing that stuff. You've been on the desk working these shows forever, right? So you feel comfortable. But I agree with you when it's Joe, even. (laughs) Even though we're the ones who got in there and fought, you're like, yeah, yeah. What do you I'm think? Like, Joe? Shit. <laughs> I know. I'm like, okay, okay. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. By the way, it was absolutely Plus awesome. all the eyeballs, Michael. Right? Like we know that when we're working the pay per view, especially if we're working a big fight like Volk and Taporia with Joe in California, really good main card. I would get nervous too. Yeah, Joe, but even more just the mm. amount of uh, mm. eyeballs that are going to be watching. Yeah, you can really feel the difference. You know, I mean, it, it was an absolute honor and a pleasure to call alongside Joe and John Anik. Let's be honest, John's the absolute man on a pay-per-view with all those tremendous fighters. You know, you do feel a little bit of pressure, uh, but that's why we like it. So real quick then, we're going to go through the other two fights as well. Mackenzie Dern, Amanda Lemos. I thought Lemos was phenomenal. I thought the striking yeah. was improved. We know Mackenzie Dern did well at the ends of rounds one and two. She managed to get on top. Um, Mackenzie, she's got to clean up. I know she's trying to get her hands and trying to rush in and punch into a clinch, but it's she's bad, dude. <laughs> leaving the chin so exposed. She's a lovely girl. I don't want to talk shit, but yeah. you got to clean up a little bit. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a little sloppy. Yeah, it's really sloppy. Uh, and again, I, I have nothing against her either. I'm not trying to ever throw anybody under the bus, um, but it's obvious that you got to work on that hardcore because you're just, you, and, and listen, what she doesn't need to work on is her toughness, her durability. Congrats, McKenzie. You Unbelievable. are you're a badass for sure. You going out there and throwing down, but it's you're swinging and missing horrifically. 
And that's just never good to leave. Thanks, babe. Sorry, my daughter. Bro. No, no, you're good. I do the same thing all the time. Um, but yeah, man, I was saying the same thing during that broadcast. I was like, oh, God, like, and then to get the takedowns, but it's just too little too late, right? If you could use your striking to get in closer to make people more vulnerable for the takedown, it would help her so much. But you're just missing so bad that you're, you're, you're wrestling isn't good enough to have that level of striking. You know what I mean? If her wrestling was really elite, you might not need that great of striking, but you can't be a mediocre wrestler and then have really bad striking and a phenomenal jujitsu. There's no way to close that gap. As you said, though, the toughness, because I, I got to say, I found yeah. myself having so much respect for her because she took her an uh, ass kicking, right? Yeah. Her face was a mess. It was bust up. The I, eyes I, were I swollen. thought she broke her eye socket. When she went down that one time, yep. she just, I thought it was over. I was like, oh, they're all over it. her face. Yeah. And then at the start of the third round, she's on her feet and she's giving it this to the crowd. And yeah. I just thought, you are tough as nails. I thought you at are that point, tough. At that point, I, I, I thought she might pull this off yeah. because the momentum at the end of that one round, it clearly shifted and Lemos was definitely getting tired and she was able to get takedowns, but she Lemos's jujitsu is, is good enough where she just was able to stay smart and stay safe and land the damage. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm laughing because you know how it is. You do a pay-per-view, you do the Wayne show, right? And yeah. it's always a good laugh when you do those Wayne shows. And we were doing, uh, we were downing wine, downing a glass of wine. Yeah, What was the wine on? Why was it wine for? for I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Probably because of Ilya Taporia. Oh, yeah. When he cuts weight. <laughs> we all had to down a glass of wine. I did it <laughs> in 0.28 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> well, one, one sip, it was gone. And anyway, so like, I, I, and I felt it a little bit. You know what yeah. I mean? I had a little bit of a buzz Especially on a wine. You chug a wine? Yeah. For sure, dude. And and first thing in the morning, just got out yeah. of bed. Barely you know. I, and and uh, I think Bobby did because <laughs> Mackenzie Dern comes walking out to get on the scale and Bobby just goes, sheesh. <laughs> did you see that? Yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah. I would have had fun working. With, that would have been fun working with Bobby Green on there too. He's uh, it, That had to be entertaining. Oh, there, here, here it, it is. Dern hasn't had ice cream in a while. She looks fantastic. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. Because that's such an honest re, like he's not doing that. He, you could tell when he saw he's like, sheesh. Like, yeah, yeah. That man. wasn't him trying to make a misogynistic remark or no. say something for the lads or try and be funny. That was him sitting there going, damn. Sheesh. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Oh god, he, he was funny, man, because we were playing this game where we had to crack shell, soft shell, whatever. Like if there yeah. was a crack in the armor, you were a crack tag, right? And he, he like, and I felt bad saying like, you know, whoever was cracked, <laughs> but we would just pick up there. He's a bomb <laughs> and throw it down <laughs> in the thing about almost all the fighters. He's a bomb. I'm like, this guy's hilarious, man. Let's get yeah. more wine down, Bobby. Today's episode is sponsored by Shopify that is here to build your business. If the business doesn't even exist, Shopify will bring it into existence. If you're already selling online, if you've got an idea, if you've got a little business, it's time to sell to the worldwide market. And it's never been easier, faster, less complicated, or cheaper to do that than it is right now with Shopify. Okay. Shopify, straight away, you're online, you're selling your goods. It lets you sell across all social media marketplaces like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. It's packed with all the industry tools that you need. You don't need to learn skills in design or code. There's customer service available 24 seven. You can instantly accept every single major payment method. So realistically, it's all there. All you got to do is go to the website, which is shopify.com slash believe. If you want to take your business or start your business and take it to the next level today, by the way, check this out. $1 per month for a trial period. So just give it a go. All it's going to cost you is a dollar. Okay. I think we can all spare a dollar. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a high flying businessman, 
give it a run. You will find that you will not regret this. Shopify is absolutely booming. It's the best place to take your product, your shop, your entrepreneurial spirit. It's the best way to get online. So as I said, it's time to get serious about selling and try Shopify today. Sign up for $1 per month by going to Shopify dot com slash believe shopify.com slash believe trial period one dollar per month shopify.com slash believe is that the dog yeah she's driving me nuts what kind of dog is it a pug let me show you let's have a look let's have a look keep this in the show brian oh my (laughs) god oh my god what's his her name bella look at the bella. look at the neck rolls on bella look at this i know let me see her face again she's gorgeous she's hilarious oh my hey, god hi. Hi, bella. i don't know why that's so funny i don't know why i'm laughing she's a fat little thing isn't oh. she yeah <laughs> she's, she's shake. not oh she's, she's not making weight anytime soon that's for oh damn sure god. and you know it, it, it's just they're the breed that sh- it just shows all It's just all on her neck. She's just got the fattest neck you could ever imagine. Her body is pretty petite, but it's all. Hey, what are you looking? What do you got in there? She's looking. We used to have a pug. They're the best, dude. They're lovable. It didn't last long. They fart, though. They stink. It didn't last. No, Charlie. I've told this story before, but we used to have a German shepherd, Dito. Not that guy in the background. That's Alfie, who was a baby. Dito was quite the opposite. You know what I mean? He was a bit of a, he had a mean streak in him. Great dog. He had a mean streak. And Charlie was eating out of his food bowl. Mm. (laughs) That was it. Got him, broke his neck, eyeball popped out of his head. I was driving to the. That's not hard to do with. (laughs) With the <laughs> yeah, pug. with the pug, their eyes are bulging much anyway. Already out, yeah. Give it a little squeal. It'd be like on the is, is it the Simpsons where Homer squeezes Bart and the eyes pop out and stuff? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told the story before, but I was going to the Fox Studios and I'm just walking in, and Rebecca, my wife, calls. She's like, Michael, Michael, oh God, Charlie, Charlie. I'm like, what? Oh, and she's like, FaceTime, and I'm like, I think he's dead. And like the neck's all floppy as hell. There's an eyeball oh, hanging out. God. I'm like, yeah, I, I, it's not looking good. Yeah, and I babe. walk in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I walk in, and it was my daughter's Ellie's uh, birthday present. That's how we had oh. the dog. And anyway, and I walk in, and it's Brian, Stan, and a few others. And I've literally just had that phone call. And I'm walking, I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And everyone's like, what? Because they're all, you know, nice, caring people. And I'm like, oh, and I tell them the whole story, right? And Brian Stan, who's a legend, by the way, not talking shit, it's just a funny story. Brian Stan goes, are you serious? I've got brothers dying every day in Afghanistan, and you expect me to give a fuck about a dog? (laughs) I'm like... I get it, Brian. I get it. I understand when you put it in the context like that, it's not a big deal. But in our house, it's our pug, man. It's a part of the family. Come on, have a heart. Oh, my God. Jeez. <laughs> Shout yeah, out. That's, uh, it's a little harsh, Brian Stan. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, no. Brian's the man, though. Brian's the man. Speaking of Brian, actually, um, one of his opponents, Vandele Silva, just yeah. got put in the Hall of Fame at the yeah. weekend. What are your thoughts on Vandele Silva? I mean, I think it's appropriate, right? Anybody that has been watching MMA for any significant significant period of time knows exactly about the axe murderer. I mean, I, that dude used to scare the shit out of me watching that guy fight. I used to think he was one of those guys where you're like, who the hell would ever want to fight that guy? And then they become humans as you watch them and you see people beat them and stuff. But back in the pride days when he's doing all that kind of stuff, I used to think that he was the scariest son of a bitch I had ever seen in my life. Um, and I would wished, I remember back in the day, I would wished he got into the UFC even earlier. Cause I feel like by the time he really got there, he was towards the, you know, the latter end of his prime. And uh, he never still really beat me, there. you prick. Yeah. <laughs> he, I was just going to ask, did you guys fight? Yeah. F- f- we fought at 185. Although, I will say this. I think I was robbed on the judges' scorecards, but whatever. It was a close one. Yeah, he did. Uh, I was going to say, he didn't He didn't go in there and take did, you out. He didn't beat me, beat me. Uh, he, he won a very questionable decision. But no, to your point, when I started MMA, I didn't really know what it was. I yeah. started watching as much as I could, and it was 2003 when he was in, in his absolute heyday in, yeah. in Pride. And I was watching him, 
And I don't mind saying it because we, there was no love lost between us for a period there when we fought. You know how it is. I talk a bit of shit. Vanderlei was always one that didn't mind a bit of a bit of yeah. aggro, you know. So, so we, <laughs> yeah. we butted heads verbally more than once. Um, but he was one of my inspirations. I remember watching him and thinking, wow, I love this guy. I want to do what this guy is doing. You know exactly. what I mean? So yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. One hundred percent. Fucking welcome. Out there. God. Yeah. No, yeah, I was going to say, welcome to the Hall of Fame, Vanderlei Silva. He deserves it, man. He deserves yeah. it. Yeah, I think so. Um, He's definitely iconic. You know what I mean? Last fight on the main card. We're just going to touch on this real quick because it will be rude not to Roman Kopolov, Anthony Fluffy Hernandez, Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. This man, what a Dude. guy, right? Because he, he bloody. He's not the biggest, he's not the strongest, he's not the most impressive to look at. But man, but he the can man fight. fights his ass off and yeah. does not give up. Not at all. He got kicked and hit with some shots too early on. And he even talked about it in the post fight that that dude kicks hard as shit. Um, he's just game, bro. You're right. Yeah. You nailed it there. It's like he doesn't do one th- anything you know, better than anybody in the division, but anywhere it goes, he's in great shape. He's going to push the pace and he can win the fight anywhere. He can strike with you and land big shots, hurt you on the feet. He's got really good wrestling when he needs to. And he, tra- he's, I think he trains at altitude and he's always in fantastic shape, pushing the pace. And he's on like a crazy win streak right now. And he looks better every time that we see him. The dude's going to be a contender soon. If he keeps fighting like this, he's, he's right there now. Yeah, I'm not sure what his ranking is now, but it'll be improved today, I would have yeah. thought, when, when they update it. One more win. Oh. And he's creeping into the conversations, I'm telling yeah. you. Um, yeah. As I say, when you look at him, he's definitely not somebody that you look and think, you're going to struggle with USADA. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. he's just you, you can see that guy's never touched steroids or anything in his life. He probably, he doesn't even look like he lifts weights. He just looks like he trains in the MMA gym. You know what I mean? Just does yeah. a lot of good old-fashioned cardio work because he can go, he can push a pace. He's phenomenal, man. I'm a big fan of Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. Fluffy. Yeah, four, four, four finishes, too, in his last five wins, Michael, on a five-fight yeah. win streak. So, yeah, dude's been looking impressive, no doubt. And I think he beat Brendan Allen as well right before the UFC. Beat him in LFA, his last fight there. Yeah, I mean, that's impressive. Sure, of course, long time ago, Brendan Allen's got better, but still. Harrison, join us, please. Um, What's up? Do you have any big takeaways before before you throw us a non-MMA story? Uh, Saturday night, what was your biggest takeaway? The biggest takeaway I had when they went to that post-fight presser, when Ilya Taporia was listing off his list of potential opponents, the one that jumped out to me was Yair Rodriguez. If that guy wins, a Mexican going into Spain... Where, dude, that blood that blood feud runs deep. That would be the biggest pay per view you could ever see for the Spanish world. Now, hold on, forgive my ignorance here. Mexico, they speak Spanish. Spain, they are the founders of the Spanish language. They are Spain. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm assuming Spain colonized Mexico. There was, there was there a, a bit war. Of, there was a was bit, there bit of conquering beef? going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was there a bit of carne asada? <laughs> beef is a beef is an understated way to put it. Yeah, I, I, I'm not familiar with the Mexican War of Independence. That fight would be epic in, like you said, more ways than one. Um, and yeah, you're clearly not a fan of. Now, granted, he's got to worry about this weekend. I'll be going out to Mexico City on Wednesday. Uh, Are you working that one? Finally working. Yeah, apparently I still have a job. This is good to find <laughs> out. Um, and my schedule starts to pick up. Uh, in March, doing a couple in March, doing Atlantic City. In, are you doing Atlantic City? I'll, I'll be there. Oh, Michael, you're in for a treat. Have you been to Atlantic City? Never been there in my life. It's not a treat. It's not a treat <laughs> yeah, at all. Is it, is it America's version of Blackpool? It's just, uh, mm, that's yes, probably. It's by the ocean. Yeah. yeah, by the ocean. Got a boardwalk. Ugly people. Lots of you know, it's got a bit of Kensington going on too, like we were talking about. So yeah. you're going to see it all. You just hang out on that boardwalk long enough. And then if you venture too far off of it, you may never come back. 
Well, it, that definitely sounds like so stay, America's stay version of Blackpool. Harrington's trying to organize a live Believe You Me podcast in this place, right? In Atlantic City? Yeah, that's what oh, Harrington said. I've never yeah. even been there. That would be I mean, fun, right? Atlantic City, it's also fun, right? I mean, you just got to, you've got to, it's not Vegas, right? You've got to go there. No, it's not Vegas. Even though there's casinos and all that, it's it's New Jersey. So It's cracking it, Vegas. But, but. I've definitely, I mean, I've fought in, in, in Atlantic City so many times, man. It's it's definitely, it's got a soft spot in my heart, no doubt about it. We can go to the Borgata while we're there. The Borgata's what, fun, actually. What's the Borgata? It's just a casino hotel there, and it's like a, the nicer one that's a little bit off on its own. So if you want to have not, good dinner, good time. I like the dinners. Go. I like the dinners, but I don't gamble much. Do you play, Paul? No, not at all. I I, I don't gamble at all. Um, yeah. I, so I'm always looking at what places have good restaurants. It's kind of uh, that, that's my thing. And what Borgata, is the go to? If you're if you're at the Borgata, when we are at the Borgata, what is the restaurant? Where are we heading, Paul? I forget the name of the sushi spot in there, but uh, that's where I always went after all of our weigh-ins because we used to fight for CFFC. We fought at the Borgata, and we would okay. stay there. So I would always get the sushi at the uh, whatever. I forget the freaking name of it now. But it's nothing crazy. But uh, there's a good steakhouse in there. There's uh, a fun place in the basement that's got like a cafeteria style set up, a bunch of different things, um, a nice center bar that gets really crowded and gets some drinks and stuff like that. All so right, all right. I think there's a speakeasy type thing where it's one of those ones where you don't know where it's at until you like go around the corner of the thing. So, oh, is there is there a car wash? Is it <laughs> at the Borgata? I mean, in, in Atlantic City, can oh, you get a car wash? There's definitely car washes, for sure. How are the staff at the car washes? I would mean, you imagine? If you were to rude. go to it like... Probably rude. Uh, uh, probably rude. <laughs> yeah. What would happen if if you were in a car wash and you threw your drink on someone? Oh, this is the segue to a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What, let me this see. I haven't just seen copyrighted this. music. Oh, my, oh, my gosh. gosh. Why would where you, was this? Why would was you this throw Harrington? your drink at the person? Where was this, Harrington? Where did this happen? I believe it was Oregon. Let me double check that right now. Uh, but yeah, she was a she was a teenager just working at the drive through and um, working at the car wash, and that was it. She got a drink thrown on her, didn't think twice, blasted her. I would too. I mean, if I'm holding that hose in my hand and you throw your freaking drink at me while I'm washing your car, you're getting sprayed in the face. I mean, listen, I don't know what's stupider, running a little meth factory at your house and then calling the police or going through a car wash and then throwing liquid over somebody that has a power washer in their hands. I mean, what do you expect? I mean, what would you do, Paul? I I mean, I would have done the same thing. I definitely would have power washed their face off, but I want to know what, the, what's the story here, right? What makes you go into a car wash and you're like, oh, I know what I'm going to do today. I'm going to splash the person that's cleaning my car in the face with this drink. Is there a backstory? Is there, was there beef? Do they know each other? I, I got to know the story. More than likely there's something, but if we just take it on face value, because the reality is there's a lot of toxic people in the world. You know what I mean? Who who knows what it was? Who knows? Right? There's got to be a reason. But still, there's a young girl working at a car wash, full time, part time, doesn't matter. And you choose to disrespect her like that. I mean, number one, yeah. it just speaks volumes about her. What a shitty human being she is. Unless there was something really bad. Let's be honest. But but as I say, you could melt somebody's face off. Yeah, that could things. not that could not have felt good getting that I mean, power washer. Brian, face. Brian, what were you gonna say? Uh like a, a power washer is a dangerous weapon. Like you can actually kill somebody with it. She's lucky she didn't leave that with a murder charge, to be yeah. completely yeah. honest. And that yeah. sounds like a painful I way mean, to it, go. it rips oh dirt and pa- paint off of stuff. You know off what I mean? Metal. Imagine yeah. that across your eye. Or yeah, they just, always just say that on though. your bone. They always say that because do you own a power washer? Have you washed your own car with a power washer? We have we have a power washer for this like the siding on our house. Yeah, but I haven't so, used it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, no. I I I bought a couple over the years. I'm not, you know I've done my car you know, when I'm feeling energetic, and I'm always like, don't get too close. And then that like, Lucas when he was younger, and Callum when he was young, but young boys, they always want to help out with the power washing bit yeah. for five minutes, and then they get bored and they leave. And I'm like, don't get too close. You're gonna you're gonna get the paint off the car. 
Okay. Oh my God! Do not Google power washer injuries. No way. Oh. I'm not putting it up. I can't pull it up on the show. Really? It's that bad. So don't Google it. Oh my God. What are you oh. seeing, Brian? Talk us through it. It the looks power like of speech. It it looks like like just things are blown open. Like yeah, with just like chunks of skin. Or like inter like it exploded from the inside. It's it's like in like like seams are just ripped into oh. people. It's crazy. I'll well, well, I'll tell you what everyone watching this right now is doing. They're opening another Googling. window on their phone. Yeah. <laughs> and they're Googling it. And I know what I'm doing as soon as I finish this as well, because I am intrigued. I should do it on Christine's um, computer and leave it open for her when I hand it back to her. Just leave open. It's a fucking gruesome. nightmare, dude. It's so do nightmare. we know what happened to that? Did Was there injuries to the girl who got power washed to the face? Or, how, is, it a le- or you- is it a less power washing piece of equipment because it is intended for car washing? Use. Yep. Uh, so no injuries, uh, but her and her boyfriend, who was sitting shotgun, were both soaked. Once they got through the drive through, they were also banned for life from ever returning to that car wash again. So sticking good. by the employees on that one. Good, good. good. Glad good, to good, hear good, it. Good. Have you ever had a, a drink thrown in your face, Paul? I'm sure. I'm sure I have, yeah. but uh, not while I was working, I don't think, ever. I mean, I can guarantee. I can't think of the... The time I know I have, but yeah. I know at 44 years old, I've definitely pissed someone off enough to eat to a drink, drink in the face, yeah. but I can't think of it right now. I guarantee no. Harrington has Harrington. You ever had a girl throw a drink in your face? Oh yeah. That, that was how I flirted in my early twenties. If I'm not getting a girl to throw a drink in my face, I'm striking out that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, but in all seriousness, I have had, surgery, bro. I've had a girl or two throw a drink in my face and oh, really? you know what? Why? I probably but, deserved it. What what did you say? It's being a little cheeky. I don't remember the exact thing. You know, you're you're, you're playing whatever it is. You know, it typically, typically works you, out. Typically, when you see like girls throw a drink in the face, like I don't know, like on a TV show or a movie, whatever, it's because the guys are saying something sleazy. And yeah. you know when you know, you know, like these cheesy chat up lines. Does <laughs> and, and and I'm looking at you specifically, Harrington. Does it, I have never gone up to a girl. I mean, number one, I was very nervous with girls. You know what I mean? When I was younger, you know, I was a, hey, uh, what, what, like, what's some classics? What's some classics? Hey, why don't you come over to my place, sit on my lap. We'll talk about the first thing that pops up. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> He's got them all lined up. Give me another one. Uh, girl, do you work for UPS? Because you can handle my package anytime. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one more. I, I'm out. I'm out. I've been, I've been Ryan, married for a while. I don't do lame things like that, Mike. I just say you're pretty, and <laughs> I ask them if they want to get a drink. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Strike up a conversation. Uh, a drink thrown in my face. Can't think. I, I can't say I have done. Um, oh, I'm sure. We were just sure saying have, a second ago, for those that don't know, we'll pull the curtain back. Paul had a little Wi-Fi issue. You wouldn't have noticed because Brian's such a great editor, top of his class. Um, <laughs> while you were gone getting your Wi-Fi sorted, we never talked about Marab. Oh. Marab. Jeez. The Marab machine. The Valish, really. he, he, number one, what a fight. Yeah. What an incredible fight. I mean, the pace of that was unbelievable. Henry yeah. Cejudo nearly knocks him out in the first round. I thought, wow, Henry's back. Yeah. Then rounds two and three, and I'm not surprised. It's not an insult because of the ridiculous pace. Henry started to slow down, started to look 37 years old. Yeah. Uh, but what was your general thoughts on Marab the Valishvili, the machine? He's, he's, a, I, he's a maniac, man. and and. uh Longo was on, I, I don't I guess it was, was it Annex podcast talking about how they Spar- basically had a three round sparring match before he went out there and fought that fight with Cejudo. So I, he's got a gas tank like nobody else in a division where gas tanks are a pretty regular thing at Bantamweight. Marab takes the crown. I mean, he is the king of pace in that division. And with his durability, the way he can take shots and then continue to do that. I mean, he's having fun in there. That's something to be noted about Marab. He wants to be there the whole time. A lot of anxiety in fighting. It does not seem to be with him. He truly seems like he can't freaking wait 
to get out there and be in that kind of a fight. I, I, I think that kid could be champion someday for sure. I mean, with that pace, bro, if you don't knock him out in the first round, he he's going to drown you. I'm utterly convinced he'll be champion at some point. I just I just struggle to see a world where he's not champion one day, just given what yeah. we saw Saturday night, the way he beat Piorian, Jose Aldo, Henry Zahudo, all former champions. And as you say, having fun. He was putting on a show. I mean, yeah. when he had uh, Cejudo in the guillotine and he squatted down in like a sumo stance and he's just like, yeah. Yeah, talking to, to, to uh, Zuckerberg. Talking to Zuckerberg, having a conversation, just chatting shit, not a care in the world. No. Having a field day. Just yeah. having a great time. Oh, there, I look at this, by the way. Let's Big, just remind ourselves. Just an Olympic gold Thank medalist you. that he is Thank taking you. across the cage and slamming down. Yeah. That's not some average UFC fighter. That's not just a double champ. That's an Olympic gold medalist that he's picking up, and I'm repeating your line, but that's wild. Yeah. Picks him up, walks across, chats to his corner, dumps him right in front of Zuckerberg, and then goes to work. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And I really thought, you know, if Henry showed up in good form, he could really test Marab and maybe get a win. And I was early on, just like you said, when he cracked him, I was like, oh, here we go. The striking's going to be sharp tonight. I think he's going to be able to land some shots and 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 give Marab a lot of trouble. Second round started, and as soon as that pace just kept going, I was like, you know what? He's going to just drown him. He's going to push too much of a pace. He's not the better technical wrestler, right? I, I mean, I don't think so. And he's still no. able to just be so freaking relentless with these guys that it doesn't matter if you stuff a couple takedowns. He, although he did take Henry down early with a single leg. I mean, he let him know right away that that's the night that he was going to be in for. That, that's oh, yeah, such a yeah. big win. I want to focus on Marab, but I saw a meme, a meme, a post or something, anyway, about Henry Cejudo. And it did make me think. It said something along the lines of how must it feel to be Henry Cejudo? Walk, remember when he ret he retired? Three years, mm -hmm. three years he was away from the sport. Three years of his prime. He walked away and retired as a double champ. Three years of big earning potential. And the meme was something like they thought the UFC were going to come back and offer him crazy amounts of money, and that never happened. And then he came back of his own accord. <sighs> Do you think he regrets that decision? And as I said, I'm a fan of Cejudo. He was awesome to deal with. I like the guy a lot. I like his team, him and Eric Albara scene. They had that whole thing last week. They're cool <laughs> as well. Um, but yeah, when I saw that, I did think, mm, interesting. Yeah. I think it's, uh, I think it's going to eat away at him that he may be, because clearly he still wanted to compete, right? I don't know if there's other stuff he really wanted to do first and then come back, but uh, you, you definitely walked away when these are fights that you probably could have won if you were in the heat of it, in the in the you know the gym day in and day out, getting ready to compete, staying a champion. You might have reigned for a long time and gone down as even a greater champion than you were. And instead, the legacy is now going to be, oh well, you retired and you came back and you didn't succeed at it. it. And that's unfortunate because of how good Henry Cejudo is. That that no matter what. It, that's that is the last thing that we'll remember. Now, granted, we, we we will look further back and know how great he was. But fresh eyeballs, people new to the sport, they'll know. Oh, he got beat up in that Marab fight. Aljo beat him. Th those are the last things people will remember, and not you know Demetrius Johnson fights and uh, you know T.J. Dillashaw fights when he was on top of his game. They will remember Marab Davalashvili standing there with Sugar Sean O'Malley's jacket on. Yeah. <laughs> Just being hilarious, chatting to Mark Zuckerberg. I tell you, he's turned into he is a funny guy. He is right? funny. A, the, the personality has blossomed. Yes. The more spotlight that he's got on him. Um, by all accounts, he will be fighting Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Cheeto Vera. I like both those guys. I just yeah. think the way Marab is, is a tough fight for anybody because how do you we're both strikers, right? How do you have a striking battle with someone that won't stop coming forward? Typically, you can't do that because you get tired and you run out of cardio or energy or oxygen. He doesn't. He just yeah. keeps coming. That is what I, you call a pain in the ass of the, the highest, ass. yeah, highest level. The, the biggest pain. And he is definitely the biggest pain in the ass in the bantamweight division. And you can tell all those guys are like, "Fuck, 
Every time he wins. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, God, he's coming. Damn. Like they know, of course they believe in their skills, but you know how it is. You know, there's certain guys that, yeah, I'll fight him when I have to. And yeah, I know I can beat him, but yep. you're still going to go, fuck. But there's always those fights where you go, oh God. That was Islam for the 55ers and Habib. You're like, fuck. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Oh, shit. Anybody from Pakistan, you're like, God damn. I think I can do it. I reckon yeah. I can do it. I can talk myself into believing I can do it. Yeah. And I'm going to train gonna like suck. I'm going to do it. It's gonna but suck. it's going to goddamn suck. So, yeah. hey, listen, well done to Marab Devalishvili. He deserves yeah. everything coming his way. Today's episode is sponsored by Chalk.com. That is C-H-O-Q.com. Testosterone, that's what they're specializing in. Men's testosterone levels are at an all-time low, right? And you've got to give it a boost, certainly as you're getting older, okay? And the supplement world is chock-a-block filled with, well, crappy supplements that don't do what they say they're going to do right? They're filled with or labeled with nonsense. There isn't the right amount of ingredients as what they say. With Chalk, they specialize in an all-natural testosterone booster. The label is correctly advertised. Everything in there, the ingredients are all measured to exact clinical research. And Chalk is the cleanest research-based testosterone booster available on the market. If you're not getting any kind of gains out of your workouts, if you're not losing weight, if you're losing muscle mass, if you're not the man you used to be, okay, the testosterone is dipping. I think it goes down by 2% or 3% every single year once you hit your 40s. So take the bull by the horns, get the bull back, put a bit, bit of blood in the bull, right? Be the man you used to be or be the man you want to be, okay? Give it a try, along with Chalk Daily, which is, again, the cleanest research-based testosterone booster available. By the way, it works as well. So make sure you try the Chalk Daily, which, as I say, is the cleanest research-based testosterone booster available. And along with Chalk Daily, be sure to check out the Male Vitality Stack and the Stack Ultra. So what more are you waiting for? Of course, a great discount. Go to chalk.com, C-H-O-Q.com while you're there. The code is Bisping. You're going to get 35% off the entire order, right? Chalk.com, promo code Bisping. Become a better version of yourself and get 35% off when you use the code Bisping when you go to C-H-O-Q.com, chalk.com. Herringbone. So we had some announcements Saturday night regarding UFC 300. We know where I'm going with this, but I'm just trying to give you a bit of our time and take a little breather myself. I appreciate it. I could use every crumb I can get. Uh, so <laughs> Jamal, uh, the big announcement, the UFC 300 main event, uh, was announced immediately after the title fight. Uh, UFC 298 is going to be Jamal Hill returning uh, to fight the current champion, Alexander Pereira, for the 205 title. I'm going to start with this, Paul. Mm. People are bitching online. People are bitching. I'm like, what are you doing? What is your issue? This is not yeah. me as a company man. Alex Pereira is one of the most exciting fighters that we've seen in the sport. Simple as that. He's a knockout machine. He's beaten yeah. four champions. He's a two-weight division champion. Jamal Hill, look at the knockout over Johnny Walker, right? And, there's, and Jamal Hill is an intense dude. That's going to be an incredible striking affair because I don't think Jamal's, he's not a wrestler, right? He's yeah. kind of, he's kind of a, he's, he's a scrapper. He's yeah. a kickboxer-ish, but he's not a, a, a technical kickboxer. He's a striker. He's a street fighter. He's just a tough bastard. Do you he's know what? That's a great fighter. fight. It's and then you combine fight. it with the rest of the card. Yeah. But yet people are still finding a way. They're spoiled. They're spoiled. They expect it. Some, I think the problem is, I think since there was such a buildup, right, and we were waiting for things to get set, finalized and settled, that a lot of people start to to want, their mind starts to wander to crazy fights, to mm. things that don't even really make sense that probably will never happen. But you start hearing rumor bills. I heard rumors. I heard things talking that Connor and Habib might come back and fight each other. Like the rumor bill went crazy. So I think when you hear all these rumors and then finally you're presented with an epic real possibility of a fight that ends up happening, like Pereira. That makes sense. That makes a lot, sense. A lot, a lot of these people that like to bitch, they always talk about, well, this isn't a logical fight. 
because they yeah. always want to find something to criticize. So even though it's a fun fight, they'll go, well, this isn't right. This isn't right. The next guy that deserves to be up is this guy. Well, Jamal yeah. Hill was the champ and relinquished the belt. So it makes sense. It's exciting fight. It ticks the boxes. Uh, but you're right. I understand. And there's bad blood. I, there's bad blood that these guys were in the cage at the same time when Jamal beat uh, Glover Teixeira, they had this stare down. I mean, oh. the build up to this is going to be, it's going to be fun. You know what I mean? There's all, they, they knew already that this was something that could happen. But at the time he was fighting at 85. Now that he's up at 205, as soon as that happened, I was like, well, this is what we're all hoping for. And we were just waiting for Jamal Hill to get healthy. Really? I mean, the guy was coming back from a, a torn Achilles and now he's back. This, this worked out for him. And Pareda is already saying he wants to bounce right back. And fight in Brazil. Um, I know in the spring. Three weeks later, he's nuts, dude. It's not going to happen. There's no way. I don't know. Fight at three hundred and then fight. At div- if he wins, and he does that, that's legendary status. I mean that that alone. You should just walk away and retire and hang your balls up on a shelf somewhere because it could happen. Epic. It could happen. I'm telling you right now because Alex. If Perez he knocks him out cold, like early, yeah, yeah for sure. One round. And, by the way, just going back, these people that were hating on it, these are the same people that wanted Tom Aspinall versus Alex Pereira, right? Yeah. Which is which which A doesn't make sense to anybody in yeah. in the middle in the light heavyweight division or the heavyweight division, right? Also, with respect to Alex, would have been a bit of a mismatch, right? Yeah. I'm not saying Alex couldn't connect, of course he could, right? Anything's possible, but, but more it's than like size it, difference. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Tom's not even close. massive. You, Tom's you, a big you've dude. Been Tom. Oh, yeah. He's a big yeah, he's a big dude, and he's fast uh, and scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he is. He is, and he's just one of the bloody nicest guys. I always say it's so annoying. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because he's yeah. just like you just got it all, haven't you? You prick. Yeah, screw you, Tom. Yeah, screw you, Tom. Uh, all right, listen, we'll go to questions in a minute, and thank you for your time today, Paul. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Harry, course, is there yeah. any breaking news? Or is, is there any big stories that we've missed? Is there anything worth mentioning before we throw to questions? No, uh, no, nothing. Time. All right. Uh, so nothing breaking. Uh, I, I just looked up if there was uh, if there was anything breaking going on. The only other thing was uh, uh, just Dana saying that Leon Edwards agreed to three different opponents um, and that Leon Edwards is, in fact, a rock star. But no word from who those opponents were or, or what those possible matchups were. Well, I'll take this with a pinch of salt. Yeah. I'll take this with a pinch of salt. I saw somebody quoting Ariel Helwani. And Hel- just because Helwani said it doesn't mean it's true, but I think he said it was Shavkat, Hamzat, and he was the third one. Apparently, it wasn't Bilal. Yeah, because but I, I I would that that's the one guy I thought too, and I'm like, there's no way they offered Bilal that fight, and he said no. Do you know what I mean? He's been begging for that fight, so I'm wonder who the third one is. And if you're Bilal, that sucks, right? That you're you just heard that Leon was offered oh, three God. dudes. Three guys and three you guys. one, not one, not one, three. That's disappointing if you're him. I'll tell you that it, it, it is, it is. But Bilal's awesome, great human being, incredible fighter, rightful number one contender. Yeah. Don't think it's the main event of a UFC 300 name that they were looking for. And that's why I I start to think that it might have not even been for the welterweight belt, right? It could have been other options or, you know, Shavkat, obviously, Islam. Yeah, see, right? They were just going for big fights for sure. And Yeah. uh, But still... That still hurts you if you're below. You're still going, you sons of bitches. <laughs> like, yeah, damn. yeah, but but if you're in, if you're Bilal, the fact that none of them it didn't happened, happen, it didn't it's happen. Not happening yeah. at UFC 300. That means because they're trying to make a blockbuster fight, right? Yeah, Leon versus Shavkat. I mean, stylistically, because against Bilal, Bilal's going to try and wrestle him. Okay, yeah. Shavkat, that'll be a great striking affair. Hamzat Chimeev, he's a massive, massive star, and that'll be fun. Islam Makachev. Is the pound for pound number one. So there's like a little bit of cachet to them. Maybe now that none of those are happening, when they get past 300, maybe now yeah, it will be Bilal and Leon. Yeah. 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 yeah we'll okay. see. Just stay with it, Bilal. Stay with it. And Leon, shout out. Fair play yeah. to Leon Edwards. That he was Paul's saying in. yes. And these other guys are saying no. Yeah. When I say yes, you say no. Uh, all right. <laughs> 
We'll do some questions. If you have a question, send it into bympod at gmail.com. Subscribe and ring that bell, by the way. And I'm going to keep talking until Hamilton's here. And if you're listening on Spotify, where you find podcasts, make sure you subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating, positive review. It really helps out on those platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, as Mike said, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to find out whenever a new episode drops. And if you want to catch over 500 episodes you can't find anywhere else, completely ad-free and totally uncensored, head to gasdigital.com. Use the promo code BYM. Get a seven-day free trial. Check out over 20 great shows on the network. See, I know you don't have CTE. Why is that? <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no, no. But like... You know, I'll talk here for two hours. I talk out my ass. I'm making things up as I go along, and I have no idea what we're going to talk about, so you freestyle. And sometimes I'll say something a little silly, and I might slur my words. Paul, you've seen this. Anytime a fighter gets something wrong, they've got CTE. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any, anything we do, we it's just yeah. it's clearly CTE. And I love that people just throw that at us like, hey – that's a serious thing. Thanks, guys. Uh, that's yeah. like joking around me and like, I just got cancer. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, oh, like, look at you with your yeah. brain damage. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucked. You were a little mumbly there. A little yeah. mumbly. And I know words, it's only it's like, because, you know, yeah. you're, on, you're on the, you're doing it fast. We're not you're sure he doesn't have time. brain damage. We're yeah, not sure. <laughs> Likely. I, don't, I think I took one style. breath there. That was it. I wanted to get through that in one breath. So as long as I did that, I'm happy with it. The jury is still out on that one. Maybe he does. Uh, Brian. All right. First question here is from JS. BYM crew, how are you doing? It's James from Durham here. Just a quick one on beginner's jiu-jitsu. Now, last year, I asked you as a question, what would be the best sort of uh, martial art to take up? Uh, and you guys recommended jiu-jitsu. Now, I've done that. I'm four months into my jiu-jitsu career, had my first competition last week, got fucking battered, which is <laughs> fine. Um, but my main, my question is, how, who would you say is the best online tutorials to watch, um, be it on YouTube or sort of a practitioner that you like to, that, that you'd pay for? Um, as, as a new white belt, there's a lot of information to take in. And during my, I do about six hours a week on the mats. A lot of information goes off my head just because of the speed and there's so much to take in. Um, who would you say is the best person to watch online, please? Brian Harrington, you guys are the fucking man. Peace. Nice. Take it away, Paul. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest and say that I have absolutely no idea who has... That's why I said take it away, Paul. Tutorial. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm sure these, these big-time jiu-jitsu players that are making tons of money doing these super fights all have some sort of online uh tutorials i would say for him to go and find what kind of style do you want to learn the most like what do you think is cool and and then go from there and look at who's the mm. best at that are you looking for leg locks are you looking to be a guy who plays you know from their back and use their guard are you trying to be a top pressure guy and then find the best guy in that. And I guarantee if he's a pro jiu-jitsu guy, he, there's videos out that you can buy or stream or go to YouTube and find those kind of things. That would be right. Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely right. And by the way, good luck and well done with your training. Um, you're very lucky because the, you, I just looked it up right now and so many just popped up on YouTube. And if you've got – sometimes if you've got a training partner, you can try it with maybe your wife, maybe your girlfriend, even your son or whatever. Uh, but a lot of the time you don't even need to be doing it because if you're drilling in the gym and then just watching someone else do it, you're yeah. still learning mentally, but you're in such a lucky position these days with YouTube and all so much and stuff like that because it's all there. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I, I, I will say this. I might have, when I've taught a few classes, just gone, what am I going to teach today? <laughs> you Look know, because you just... Not that I don't know anything. It's just like, you know, back in the day when I was running a few classes and it's like my mind had just gone blank and I'd yeah. look over and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that were, I'll, I'll steal that one today oh, yeah, and use I that as that my stuff. own. Yeah. Coaches sure. can do it. Students can do it. You too can do it. Um, <laughs> just going to conceive, believe, and achieve. That's it. Brian. All right. So the next question we have is from a Mr. Sam Winter. Ironically, winter looks like Tyson Fury. Well, it's happening, lads. Sammy here from Burnley. Probably one of the people submitting questions into me that actually knows what fucking believe you me means. Isn't that right, DJ Mikey B? Let's go. Scratch master, as he's known around here. But anyway, lads, question is I've been doing the MMA striking sessions for a good few months now. 
I've uh, historically done a bit of boxing here and there. And one thing that's challenging is when you start bringing in the kicks and the knees and all that type of shit, it really starts clicking with your footwork and what you've what you've learned previously. So my question to you, Mr. Mikey B, obviously you had brilliant footwork as a middleweight, you managed to get yourself in and out pretty quickly. Notice closing them gaps, getting back away and all that type of shit. You did it pretty fucking swiftly. So I've been doing a lot of skipping recently, but any other exercises that you can recommend to improve my footwork? Mm. Fire them away, lads, and we'll see what we can do with it. Take it easy. Nice one. Burnley. Burnley. Do you know when I was saying that Blackpool? Yeah. Out of some of the ugliest people. <laughs> Is that- so I'm from Cl- I'm from Clitheroe. There's a big gigantic hill called Pendle Hill. On the other side of the hill, down the street a bit, is Burnley. We call <laughs> them Dingles. Okay, <laughs> the old Dingle Land. Thank you very very much, um, Paul. What can he do to improve his footwork? Yeah, I, I thought that's a good question, right? Especially he's saying he's had some boxing uh, over the years, and then you start trying to do MMA, and it's just a, a totally different uh, ball game. But I think using your footwork that you're trying to get down on pads on bag work and stuff like that instead of just standing and crushing the heavy bag try to really move around the bag work on that footwork as well as shadow boxing right whatever you're trying to if you're trying to work on in and out and movement and avoiding dipping your head and things like that you've got to train it at all times or it's not going to work when you actually try to put it in action and sparring you're just going to be stuck in the mud so really try to focus on using footwork and movement in your shadow boxing and 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 picturing what's going on and same with the bag even though the heavy bag's right in front of you you can feint it move in cut angles go around it all different ways and it'll help uh, kind of get that stuck into your brain that you can't just stand and strike you've got to move strike strike and move and just be on the move at all times if you're trying to advance that footwork but i was more of a plotter myself anyway so there was a few drills that i always used to do and if i'm ever doing like a little bit of a guest class which i don't do very often but i do want to get into teaching do you want to do that paul what's that teach teaching yeah yeah not not really but i wouldn't mind do, doing it every now and then to work with the the young guys that are on the up back in the gym. That's that's kind of what I'm for the kids. Uh, yeah. Just as I'm getting older, I, I, and I don't mean just yet. I mean I can just see myself like in my fifties, being like an old Mickey style half yeah. drunk coach <laughs> giving all the kids shit. That's not how you do it. No man alive should be moving yeah. like that. No, uh, I'll give you some drills real quick, and I hope you can make sense of this. And I do these all the time. Certainly when I was fighting. If you can get those little cones or little uh, disc things from like Dick Sporting Goods or you don't even need that. You can use a glove, a, a water shake, whatever, three things, and you just number it one, two, three. Stand there in your stance. And if you've got someone else to call out the numbers, one, two, three, that's better. But you can do it yourself. you go three, two, three, and you go forward and back to those, to one. Two. If you're in three here, you go forward to one. So you go forward two, two, go back, one, three, and just keep doing that. That's the in and out stuff. Then you can line up four in a row. And one, four, two, three, one. Just going like that. Someone calling out the numbers. Then you can have four, one, two, three, four in a square. And one in the middle. And then you've got to go in and out. And then around, in, out, around, in, out. Like two minutes at a time. Stuff like that. They're just, yeah, just very, awesome. very basic drills. But it's, um, yeah, it's good. I might do a little YouTube video. Footwork drills with Mikey B. Let's get that money. God, baby, come on. Uh, Brian, let's do one more before Paul Felder loses his mind, hangs up for good, <laughs> blazes it, blames it on the Wi-Fi. Sorry, says, the Wi-Fi is uh, getting shaky again. <laughs> no, Fuck those no. guys, and believe you me, we've been on here for 17 hours. <laughs> no, it's uh, all good. Right. So I saved the best edited one for last. This is oh, uh, Mark O'Regan. Oh. 401. Oh, hi, guys. Didn't see you there. A um, couple of things. First thing for Mr. Bisbing. I know you've been looking for something to watch, so try Mr. In Between. It's on Disney Plus, and it's about a guy who's got one foot firmly in the underbelly, the underworld. In Australia, I think hitman, drugs, that kind of thing, while also trying to look after his little kid. Fuck. Secondly... Uh, we know you're very much an actor yourself, and you've written a book. So, have you ever thought about writing 
a script for a TV show or a film. Um, even if you haven't, what would you write? Cheers, guys. Fuck you, Harrington. <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? I've I, I forgotten because I was so enamored. Mark. Mark. Yeah. Forgettable guy. Forgettable guy, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark. Mark, you're the man. I just want to say a big shout out to everyone in England today. No Americans. Americans, step your game up. Come on. Yeah. Worldwide. We got a worldwide platform. How dare you? It's a holiday for Americans today. Ah, correct. True. Correct. True. And here um, I am working. What were the questions? I know he mentioned about acting. Have I ever would thought you, about writing? Would more? you write a um have you ever thought about writing a script for TV or film? Yeah, so here's the thing, Paul, and we can both, you know, partake in this conversation. I'm glad you're here for this one. Um, a lot of look, listen, you do a bit of acting, I do a bit of acting, you actually are a trained actor, right? You went to school for it and studied oh, yeah. properly. So you actually know what you're doing as opposed to me that's well, making it up as I go at, along. At least I paid money to think that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and generally what you find is a lot of people, like, like look at Sylvester Stallone for crying out loud. He wasn't getting the opportunities. He writes Rocky yep. and then, you know, he becomes Sylvester Stallone, Sly, a legend. Um and that's generally what you find a lot of people trying to create their own stuff and produce their own material. So I would be lying if I said there wasn't a couple of things that we've worked on, nothing that's been picked up and nothing that I've written. I've had a couple of like ideas. My problem is I have ideas, but I never action them. Yeah. Are you a doer? I'm not, when, I'm, I'm not when it comes to that type of, uh, action i mean i'm very good at if i have something i want to do getting them going and doing it but i'm not a writer and i know i know that i also have ideas for things and i've thought of oh that would be a good movie or that would make a good tv show and just all based on th things i've experienced in my own life though not that they'd be biopics but I, you could turn them into anything fictional as well by just changing who everyone is and all that um <clears throat> but it's tough man writing Writing is tough. If you if you don't have a knack for that that part of your brain to be able to put down realistic conversations and, and things like that and and the arc of a story and how things can go without being boring or you know too long, it, it, script writing is is a pain in the ass. And I'm always I always marvel people that are, are good at at writing movies and plays and things like that. I've always wanted to be a part of kind of working on a play if i was to do something like that i have ideas for it but i would always need somebody that was better at putting it into a format yeah no 100 percent uh I, I don't even think i need to state i'm not a writer okay yeah, i'm writing a script is not something I'm, I'm i'm just not capable of doing that right yeah. you gotta attend classes and study for that and i'm just my mind doesn't work that way but i do have ideas for what yep. could make a great show or make a great movie. And just like you said, and th this is like with everybody, it's based upon your own lived experiences. I'm yeah. not a guy that can even think about something that I know nothing about. Do you know what I mean? Let's write a show about X, Y, Z. I don't know. Let's, uh, figure skating. Some guy that wanted to be a figure skater. I don't know. Bad example. But you understand what I'm yeah. saying. I, yeah. I can talk about my experiences and I'm, I'm lucky enough. I've got a buddy that is smart, you know, and he is, a, in, he's kind of a, he's a producer and we've we're still, we're yet to do anything, but there's been yeah. a few shows. Like there was one, like the rave scene, the dance scene in the nineties in England was massive. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was a bit of a raver back in the day. And there's so many good storylines and stuff like that. And around the rave scene, there was a lot of, drug dealers so there's all mm -hmm. that kind of yeah, all characters story. yeah there's all yeah. these characters and i'm like there's never been a good show or a movie like that proper delves deep into that side of it so you could have a killer soundtrack with like the great music from the 90s like the trance stuff i know that's not your vibe but like but then also a bit of gangster stuff sprinkled in kids experimenting with drugs getting in trouble with the police so that's like yeah. kind of something i've been thinking about for a while because there was a show on netflix i forget what it was called but it it wasn't it was too pretty. Yeah. It's got to be gritty and grimy and ended up back at some shit house afterwards. And you're in someone's kitchen at five in the morning thinking, who the yep. fuck are these people? What am I yeah. doing here? What am I you doing? Know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I have ideas like that, but. Oh, anybody out there. But, but I'm still doing this podcast every week. <laughs> got, got ideas. Got ideas.
Paul, yeah. can I just say, loved talking to you today. Loved having you on the show. And uh, we're going to try and uh, make this a more regular thing, buddy. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to be talking to Anthony and I'll be like, listen, dude, you know, you better watch yourself. You better start being around because. So, so Anthony versus Paul, UFC 301. <laughs> the winner <laughs> be on the show he'd take uh, it that guy will fight anybody he'd be like sure we'll fight we'll fight <laughs> he bloody would as well that's the show guys take care <laughs>